the e-infrastructure use cases and service usage models project, or EUS for short, is developing a deeper understanding of how the research community uses advanced IT or e-infrastructure services. E-infrastructure services can include integrated online databases, collaboration software, workflow engines, grid computing, data analysis and visualization tools. EUS researchers at the Universities of Oxford and Manchester have conducted over 30 interviews across a broad range of subjects from which nearly 20 experience reports and use cases have been developed. EUS seeks to demythologize e-infrastructure and engage with researchers in different roles, including postgraduate students, postdoctoral researchers, IT specialists and principal investigators. A selection of the use cases have formed the basis for the video research trailers. The use cases and the videos provide readers with authentic stories about how e-infrastructure is integrated with and has changed various aspects of the research lifecycle. The videos commissioned from Zoob, a professional film production company with experience of working with universities, are intended as trailers to encourage the viewer to seek out more information about the research or technologies and indeed to encourage the development of their own research story. Amongst the 20 or so use cases EUS has documented, here are a few examples from researchers that have been filmed so far. The physicist who discovers the usefulness of grid-based simulation tools and access grid communication for collaborative research. I think we're entering into a completely new era and I think scientists are going to have enormous new capabilities. Uh, a few years ago uh, you would have had to run many calculations on big supercomputers. Now our desktops are much more powerful than the resources we had just a few years ago. The experimental biologist who teams up with a bioinformatics specialist in order to analyse gene sequences using workflow engines and dedicated social networking tools. Without Taverna and my experiment, we would have been looking where everybody else has looked. And we would not have been looking more widely, simply because we had the tools to allow us to do that. And in looking more widely, we spotted things that have been missed. And that's quite, that's exciting. The archaeology team, who use a combination of digital pens, a wireless network and an integrated network database to manage and analyse finds, both on-site and back in the department. I was a bit of a Luddite back in 1997. I, I, you know, it was all new to me. And, um, well, now, you know, it's like an umbilical cord. I can't do without it. The computational chemist, who employs the power of grid-based simulation tools to discover the potential crystal structures of organic compounds. This was a great opportunity to really throw everything we could experimentally and computationally at the same molecules and put the results together to try and get a real understanding of what is going on. The EU's project started in 2007. Over the past two years, the use of e-infrastructure will have become more normal. There is a natural lag time between the release of innovative technologies and their percolation into day-to-day -day research. The EUS project has made a small contribution to understanding the successful facilitation of research through technology. Realising the potential offered by these technologies requires that the actual usage of e-infrastructure continues to be documented. We hope that the EUS project, through the videos and use cases, offers a methodology for engaging with researchers, whatever their role and wherever they may be in their research process.